Texas took third place for the amount of undocumented immigrant residents behind California and New York. Back in 82, Pat Buchanan had stood at the U.S.-Mexico border in San Diego with an audience of white supremacists, including Tom Metzger, saying that over 1,000 of the arrested people in the L.A. riots had been illegal. And that Bush's immigration policy was a national disgrace. This is despite the fact that Bush had given border control agents the ability to carry firearms and make arrests for non-entry crimes. The Metzger crowd, which Buchanan disavowed, held signs saying, they are coming by the millions and they are all pregnant. At the rally were also migrants waiting to cross the border, said one man from Mexicali when told that Buchanan wanted to invest in border patrol. They have all kinds of technology, but we are smarter. People are smarter than machines. We are still gonna cross. In fact, as soon as all you people get out of here, we are gonna go for it. Well, damn. By 1994, immigration was a growing wedge issue, especially in the heated 94 race for California governor. As late as March 1993, only 2% of Americans ranked immigration as their top concern. But increasing reports about the cost of providing services to immigrants were changing things. The Center for Immigration Studies, for instance, found that public assistance and education costs for immigrants cost $2.2 billion alone in 1990. So by August 93, incumbent California Governor Pete Wilson was desperate to overcome poor approval ratings in his re-election bid against state treasurer Kathleen Brown. They keep coming. Two million illegal immigrants in California. The federal government won't stop them at the border, yet requires us to pay billions to take care of them. Governor Pete Wilson sent the National Guard to help the Border Patrol. But that's not all. For Californians who work hard, pay taxes, and obey the laws, I'm suing to force the federal government to control the border. And I'm working to deny state services to illegal immigrants. Enough is enough. After this ad, Wilson published an open letter to the federal government saying California was going broke because it had to take care of immigrants. California was in the middle of recession recovery and there were hundreds of thousands of jobs lost. Wilson later said at a press conference, we are compelled to cut aid to the needy, blind, disabled, and elderly in California in order to comply with federal mandates to provide services to illegal immigrants. Anti-immigration activists developed a 1994 initiative titled Save Our State, which became Prop 187. It called for establishing a state-run citizenship screening system and would prohibit illegal immigrants from using non-emergency health care, public education, and other services. Children whose parents couldn't provide identification documents would be kicked out of school after 90 days. Prop 187 also took the additional step of making teachers, healthcare workers, and law enforcement responsible for monitoring and snitching. It appealed to California voters of all walks of life because it framed immigration as a fiscal problem rather than an issue of race. While Prop 187 attracted some Democratic voters, many pointed out that such a law would endanger the state's federal funding. In addition, to dividing Democrats, Prop 187 exposed Republican divisions within the party. Reaganite Republicans like Jack Kemp saw Prop 187 as a future liability for the party that would lead to isolationism. <laughs> Latino organizers fiercely protested the initiative across the country, fearing that the proposition passing would lead to similar laws elsewhere. LA saw one of its biggest protests in history on October 16, 1994, when an estimated 70,000 people marched through downtown. Meanwhile, 57% of Asian voters and 47% of black Americans were in favor of the bill. Among the Californians who voted, 78% of Republicans and 62% of independents voted for it. While 64% of Democrats opposed it. Ultimately, the initiative passed with 59% of Californians voting in favor. Similar proposed laws would pop up in other states and the immigration issue moved into greater prominence. Though Prop 187 would be ruled unconstitutional and never officially implemented, Pete Wilson won his reelection and eight federal and state lawsuits plagued his next tenure. Prop 187 also pushed more Latinos into the Democratic Party and politics. At least one million Latino immigrants registered to vote and became naturalized in the following years as a direct result of Prop 187. The electoral battles of 1994 rattled Clinton, who had unsuccessfully urged Californians to reject Prop 187 in favor of federal policy. He fine-tuned his approach on the issue in his 1995 State of the Union address. All Americans 
not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens or legal immigrants. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before, by cracking down on illegal hiring, by barring welfare benefits to illegal aliens. In the budget I will present to you, we will try to do more to speed the deportation of illegal aliens who are arrested for crimes, to better identify illegal aliens in the workplace as recommended by the commission headed by former Congresswoman Barbara Jordan. We are a nation of immigrants, but we are also a nation of laws.